Welcome to Accomplished Minds, a community of passionate and inspired people from around the world building a new emerging economy. Today we are going to talk about innovation creating opportunity for both the entrepreneur and her customers. Meet Susan Ogoya, a remarkable woman who is the co-founder and chief operation officer at MFAM Limited. MFAM is an award-winning Kenyan software solution and agribusiness company. Its major product is the SMS-based service that connects Kenyan farmers to the global market prices of their crops, letting them buy and sell at the most favorable prices. Welcome Susan to Accomplish Mine and thank you for joining us all the way from Kenya. Thank you very much, Lorraine. <laughs> Lorena. Thank you yeah. so much. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? I'm from the western side of Kenya, uh, where mostly fish are, that's where most of, most of the fish in Kenya comes from. Uh -huh. And um, I came to Nairobi because of studies, education. Mm -hmm. And if you look at where I come from, it's a rural area. Uh -huh. So our parents keep on sending us off to the cities to get better education. Yes. So um, I got into technology, I got my interest while I was in high school okay. and then when I came to the university I took it up. I did bachelor's in business information technology, majored mostly in IT, minored in the business sector. Yes, that's basically the I'm 25 years old right now. Okay. <laughs> that's great. You, you have yes. taken a social and market problem, a lack of information, yes. and you found a solution. Tell us about MFAM. MFAM is two years old right now, but I would say one year in business. How we started is that me and two of my colleagues, who are the co-founders of MFAM, uh, came up with this idea from magazines, journals, newspapers of Kenya, and farmers used to complain in the newspapers uh, that, first of all, they, they lack the, uh, the, there's a difference between what is happening in the farm and what is in the market. And second of all, they had access to expensive farm input. And third of all, mm -hmm. they were wondering why middlemen will only come to them during harvest and not during uh, planting time. So all the three of us have a background in technology and we decided to come up with this idea and later we, once this, we researched the idea and looked at other organizations that have done it and their failures and from then we saw, okay, then we'll approach this at a particular manner. So of course SMS is not something that is different, like it's not something new in Kenya, people have already used it. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, the simplest thing that we can do is use a tool that a farmer has that can only be used for texting and calling and give them more value add on top of it. So that's the background of MFAM. And yes, we got into a competition and made this from a theory to something that's actually being executed currently in six different regions in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Congratulations yes. on your company being two years old. So what yes. were some of the challenges you had faced in the early days of NFAM? Were there any challenges? Of course, there were. <laughs> First of all, the thing is that we take it uh, when we do applications, we think of it from our own end and forget that the users are going to use it at the long run. Mm -hmm. So one of the many things you assumed is that yes, They've been using SMS, but we didn't know how they've been using it. So one of the challenges was we had to go down to the field and train the farmers how to use the SMS. So illiteracy was one of the major things that came through our way. The other thing was, of course, another challenge is when you go to the fields and say we are city girls, you don't know what farmers go through. So of course you have to be with them, pivot with the product with them so that they can really understand why you are here for them. So the trust issue was another thing. So that's why we had to sit down in the field for almost six months to actually get them to use it. 
The other issue is, of course, the fact that we are women in the community. And they would wonder why would a woman come and train you how to use a mobile phone. So we had to mention to them that we are kids of farmers and we started with, farming and, uh, with money for farming. So we came back to show you the value of farming. So from there they got to understand that we are just their children for coming back to give back the knowledge they got from uh, the cities and enhance their life in the rural areas. So those are the major three challenges we came across and we tried to tackle them through the six months we're in the field. So you are part of the East Africa technology boom. Can you tell us a little more about that? Because I'm reading a lot about that you know, on BBC and articles. Yeah. Can you give us some more, explain on that for us? Yes, so as you know, agriculture is like uh, the food basket of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So, and also in Africa as well, agriculture is known as to have like at least 50% of the uh, of the economic growth of a country. So, us getting into this kind of sector shows that it's something that has actually been needed, and people wanted to come up with such a solution to reach the people in the rural areas and try to connect them and also make a country thrive out of its agricultural resources. So I would say it's not something that is new, it's just something that people have been wanting to have access to, but thank, uh, thank technology that has come in and people are finding ways on how to make it more interesting to the new, uh, the young population that is coming up so that they can strengthen the economy of, of our country through the agricultural scene. So I would say it's the niche in the market in Africa, agriculture being the top uh, sector helping the growth of an economy of a country. And yes. it is using the technology to help the agricultural sector move forward. Exactly, and also now you can see from articles, research articles, how uh, mobile phone penetration and internet penetration has come into Africa. So we are very lucky to be in Kenya, whereby I think Kenya is in the top 10 list or the top 5 list of uh, countries that have the highest mobile phone uh, penetration and also the internet penetration. So. Uh, as I say, it's more of technology helping us drive this and agriculture being there since before we were born. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Susan, how is failure viewed in your community? Failure? Yes. Okay, so agriculture is viewed as failure. <laughs> uh, one, of the one of the things you hear even in schools is that if you fail, your punishment is going to the farm and farming, or trying to yeah, uh, go dig and make the land look good. They're trying to change that. That's not failure. Apparently, um, this has been brought by, actually, let me just say, the Western culture, that um, industrialization and technology, of course, is like the top de la creme of like the job in in whatever whatever you go internationally or Africa wise. So this notion has is not is viewed also the same as here in, in Kenya or in Africa. So failure to us as an informative land when you started mm -hmm. is like a stepping stone to another challenge. Mm -hmm. But when you started Enform, failure was more of you haven't achieved the milestones that will make you become um, perfect in the society, let me say that. So, and being perfect in the society means you having a white collar job, and failure means you having the poor man's job and doing the dirty job. So, yes, I determined failure before m and failure after m So from the experiences I've learned, failure for me is more of a stepping stone to new heights. Before I'm firm, failure was more of, yes, failure is attached to punishment, and punishment is poor man's job or dirty, dirty work job, yes. Yeah. 
But do you think that the fear of failure is a significant obstacle to young entrepreneurs, especially within the developing world? It's true. It's true. This has led to uh, mostly you being categorized in a society mm. as, um, let me say, the, the black ship. If you fail, you're a black ship. <laughs> yeah. So, um, fear of failure is actually something that has to be declined totally in our society. I don't know if I'm answering the question right, but for me, fear, fear of failure is not something a youth should look into when they're starting something from scratch or when they're going on with their education. Fear of failure mm. is like an obstacle to success. Mm. That's what the part where they are. So how can people like you and I help people to learn from failure and go on to succeed and reach, as you say, their milestone? I'll use personal experience to um, how I learned about fear of failure. So, fear of failure is more of um, procrastinate. Like, for example, looking into looking ahead and you haven't achieved it, and you forget that you have the ability to reach your goal. So, one of the major things I, I have learned is that. Rather than sitting down and thinking how I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. actually just fold my sleeves and do it. And from that I learn. I learn from that <laughs> when doing it, not from just sitting and seeing the failures coming in. Rather than sitting and seeing the failures coming in, I would empower myself with more positivism and optimisticness compared to being pessimistic from the word go. So I'll give you an example. When we actually started them from the same ones, yes, we are here. What next? What if farmers don't agree with us? What if the product? Now, what if make you make you start having the fear of uh, trying it out and also fearing failure when it comes upon? Rather than thinking of what if, for me, is the first thing I think of is yes, this is my objective. Second, how do I do this? And rather than thinking of what it's, what it's, what it's, when I'm actually doing, when I say, okay, stage A is this, when I'm actually implementing it and reach the what it section, is when I start thinking of what if I take this route, what if I take this route. So I'll try, um, for me, it's more of setting, setting your goals to avoid the fear and actually doing it. Yeah. Action, being very actional, taking action on your idea. Having actions and yeah, and goals at the end. Susan, can you tell us what stood out as a defining moment for you in your MFAM journey? The users of the system who are the farmers. For a farmer to approach you and say your application has helped me, has increased my livelihood, that makes me happier mm. compared to the revenue that we bring in. First of all, the social bit makes me uh, makes next and be what it is. We surely say when we are investing in people is the right thing, and the later the investment in people will turn into money. So of course we are doing our mantra is doing good while making money. <laughs> yeah, so doing good is actually what pushes us ahead. So it's more of fast focusing on our users as what define what. Are the people who define what I'm talking. Mm. Yes. I'm sure that is a satisfying experience for you. Yes. A lot. <laughs> yeah. What would you tell people, especially from the developing world, who have an innovative idea, who might make which might make that idea might make a huge impact to people's lives mm -hmm. and they don't know how to get started? What piece of advice would you tell that individual? Do it. Just do it. <laughs> Stop thinking. Do it. You said you're going to do this. Okay. Do it. What kills us is the fear of failure. 
that if you just do it, then you have a way of getting away from the fear of failure. Yes. Those are the three words, just do, do it. Yes. Susan, so what are your plans? What are the plans for MFAM Future? Plans for MFAM Future is to expand to uh, East African and let me say in five years okay. I want to expand to East African country and uh, be able to have a commodity exchange platform. Yes. Are you planning to export the technology outside? Like to the rest yes. of the developing world? If, if we are expanding to East Africa, it means that M-Farm system will be also used in those East African countries so that they can see the value that the Kenyan farmers have been achieving. Yes. And as we speak currently, mm -hmm. there has been demand from other developing countries to want the same application. But the thing is that when you're planning to move to other countries, you have to ensure that your product is stable and usable in your own country and then you can move it to other countries when it's actually, actually working. Yeah. Yeah. So what your, our, our main objective is to expand and farm to other East African countries. Yes. Well, I wish you success with that expansion drive. And I must, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you took time out to interview with me this morning on Accomplished Minds. Yeah. And thank you so much, Susan. You're welcome. If you'd like to see more, subscribe to AccomplishedMinds.com.